Hello everyone, this is Sam Gabriel and in today's video we're going to cover uh, Packer and Terraform from HashiCorp and how you can use Packer to create VMware templates for Ubuntu uh, VMs and then using Terraform to deploy those templates in the environment. So let's go ahead and get started. Now uh, we have a, another video that I went through showing how to do the same kind of workflow but using Windows Server 2016 and in this video uh, we're gonna go through Ubuntu if you're if you want to follow the other video I'll have a link in the description that you can uh, reference now the work done here uh, primarily was done by Guillermo Musumichi so you can uh, reference this medium post to see what he's done uh, this is for the Windows Server but you also see uh, references to uh, to Ubuntu machines as well so as you can see here we've got the packer for Windows I also have packer for Linux so he uh, he wrote most of this I just added some uh, color here I made sure that you know this works there were a couple of bugs but uh, in large, thanks to Guillermo, appreciate his work on this. So what we'll do, we're gonna go through the Ubuntu uh, main JSON file for Packer. Uh, that's how Packer runs. So, and as an example, if you go into this readme file, you'll see this is the command you need to run to get Packer to uh, create this template for you. Uh, so Packer build, and then you, you have this field for var file this is to reference the variables file that you're going to use and then the JSON the main JSON file to use with Packer so the variables file um, you typically don't want to commit this into your github or your version control system so in general I add this to the git ignore uh, file so but as an example here you, you specify all the different uh, variables that you need to use in the main JSON file so things like your server fully qualified domain name or IP address so this is for vCenter the username and password for vCenter uh, the name of the data center you want to deploy into the data store the templates the cluster name the network name uh, the resources how big they are CPU memory disk the SSH username and password and here because of Ubuntu is open source uh, in this case you can reference the ISO URL straight here straight from the Ubuntu website and also the checksum for that and the checksum type is SHA-256 for Windows we had to download the ISO uh, into a data store inside of VMware to be able to run this alright so let's go back and take a look at the main uh, Packer file here as you can see, we're using a builder of type vSphere ISO. Uh, this talks to vCenter, so we need all the vCenter uh, credentials to log in. And as you can see here, this is templating to reference the variables that we had in the previous variables.json file that we just saw. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but you need to change the name here from variables.json.txt to variables.json so that uh, basically it, it will run it has to end in a JSON extension um, here we're filling out the information that needs to uh, get the builder the vSphere ISO builder to talk to vCenter so referencing all the variables that we defined earlier insecure connection is used here because I'm using a self-signed certificate in vCenter um, everything here is straightforward convert this to template true so after we're done I'm going to convert this into a template to use later with Terraform to build a VM. Uh, network adapters, uh, the boot order, the guest OS type is Ubuntu 64, uh, SSH credentials, CPU, RAM, disks, and storage. Uh, one thing to note here, this is very important. If you're creating a template with Packer and you specify the disk thin provisioning is false, meaning that it's you're going to use a thick provisioning, uh, uh, storage or uh, disk then in the Terraform in Terraform when you are deploying that uh, VM you also have to uh, use thick provisioning you can't mix and match so what I always do is I create two files one with Ubuntu 18 thick.json then another one Ubuntu 18 thin 
dot json if you want to create a both thick and thin provisioning so that then you can reference each template accordingly depending on what kind of storage you want to deploy with terraform yeah um, here's the iso url and checksum and then the floppy files we're going to load this uh file into floppy files precede.cfg so it's a configuration file when kind of like an unattended uh, file so when you're installing ubuntu or when packer is installing ubuntu it uh, it can go through that file and install all the things that you want in there so the boot command is you just copy and paste this as is and then you can see here the file media precede.cfg is the actual reference to this sample precede.cfg. I also don't uh, like to uh, push this into the version control system because it contains some passwords that you might not want to use, like the username and password here. So change this to precede.cfg and you'll be good to go. And of course, make changes here. So what does this file look like? So the things that you would normally do when you're uh, configuring or bringing up a Ubuntu system. So the language, the country, and so on. You can see keyboard settings, user creation. So you can create a user here, give it a username and password. Uh, disk partitioning, setting up the root password. Package installation is great because now you can create all kinds of packages in here that are pre-installed. So uh, I need Vim, for example, I need Perl, NetTools, and so on. Um, I use this personally for building Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster in my home lab to use for my internal projects. And uh, it's great because here I can specify all the dependencies that are required to, to run Kubernetes on these nodes. And uh, so you, you put that in here. Uh, also, you can add your username to the sudoers um, file. So all this is, is something you can run in the pre-seed section now going back in here to the main packer file or json file you can see the after all this is done there is a section on provisioners and provisioners you can do anything really in the vm afterwards so any shell commands you'd like to run you can run here inline shell commands so i found that you definitely need to run these two commands to uh, remove this file machine id uh, and then touch that file again so that when Terraform creates a new VM, it will put a new machine ID in there. If you don't do that, um, there are a couple of errors I, I ran into. I think one of them was had to do with the VM not getting an IP address, even though I am using a DHCP or asking it to use DHCP to assign an IP, uh, I ran into that error. So make sure you, you include these two commands here. So that's pretty much it from a Packer's perspective. And um, let me pause the video for a second and log into my vCenter. And then we can uh, take a look at what the template looks like over there in vCenter. All right, so we're back in here and I'm on my local vCenter uh, screen. And inside the templates folder, this is where I created the templates. So you can see that I have a couple of Ubuntu templates, one master, one worker. The reason why I did that is when I'm deploying Kubernetes, I have a master node and I have three worker nodes and they have different configuration. So the master node has, uh, I think it was 50 gigs of, um, um, of disk space, for example, whereas the other ones were about 200 gigs of, of space and some other uh, unique configuration per per each one of those worker nodes. The worker nodes one, two, three uh, have the same configuration, I should say. The master node is different. So that's that concludes the portion on Packer. So now I have a nice uh, template that's ready to be used whenever I want to create a new machine. And now let's talk about how to build the actual VM using Terraform. So let's close this and now let's focus more on the Terraform side of things. So Terraform, we have three vari three files, a main.tf file, a, an output.tf file, and a variables.tf file. And there's another file here called Terraform. Uh, it should be terraform.tf vars. 
Uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is just giving you a sample because once again, this contains sensitive information that I don't want to push into uh, GitHub. And uh, so I've sanitized it, of course, and um, you can, you're free to make the changes, but always be sure to change this to terraform.tfvars so that Terraform can pick it up and use that. And the reason this, this is the way Terraform works is the variable, variables.tf file is where you declare all your variables, whereas the terraform.tfvars file is where you assign those variables so you can override any defaults that you create in here. So uh, once again, very similar to what we did with Packer, the variables are very similar because again, we need to connect to vCenter. So the vSphere user, the password, the uh, vCenter fully qualified domain name or IP address. Uh, here I'm specifying that uh, we're using unverified SSL because it's a self-signed certificate. The data center uh, name, the cluster name. See, if you see default, that means uh, you know, if it doesn't see it in the TFVARS file, it's going to use this default. Uh, templates is the name of the template for folder where I'm going to call upon my templates to build the VMs. And then the VMware vSphere virtual machine settings is where, uh, in this case, how many machines do I need? It could be one, it could be many. When I ran the worker nodes, for example, I used uh, three nodes for those VMs so I can run three nodes in parallel. I don't have to wait sequentially. Terraform is smart enough to go and tell uh, vSphere to run three nodes in parallel or, or generate three VMs in parallel. Then you can give the VM name, uh, the VMs a prefix name. Uh, so something like K3, K3 or Ketchup. This is what, what it's uh, short for. And uh, K3S, if you're not familiar with it, it's a short or a, a lightweight Kubernetes distribution that uh, I, I really like. It's lightweight. I run it in my home system and uh, yeah, very happy with it. Uh, va another variable, the name of the data store, name of the network. <clears throat> do you want to do a link clone? Or uh, I usually set this as false. Uh, the CPU, how many, so we've got two cores here, or how many CPUs, the RAM, the name of the VM, and the guest ID, a template name, and finally a domain that you want uh, this particular VM to be part of. So that uh, sums up the variables file. And here's where we assign the, the actual variables themselves, right? So count of two, CPU two, for example, this is where you're, you're gonna uh, override the defaults. Um, and here we have a domain of home, for example, right? Now the next file here is the actual main file, which is where everything gets defined in terms of what provider you're gonna use or using vSphere. Once again, in all I, my videos, I make sure that you always pin the version of the provider that you're using so that in case the uh, maybe a month down the road, you uh, give this to a, a colleague or you rerun the code yourself. If you didn't specify the version name, uh, number um, of the provider, what you'll end up happening is you're gonna pull the latest version of the provider and there could be breaking changes that might break your code. So specify username and password in the vSphere fully qualified domain to get in. Uh, from here, we're pulling. So there are two key things to know from Terraform, data and resource. So data at the top here, there's resource at the bottom here. If you call on data, then you're basically asking or getting something. In this case, we're getting the uh, vSphere data center name. Uh, we're getting the name of the data store. So we've already connected here. Now we're grabbing this information. And um, we're, we're calling the cluster, the network, and then the template, the, uh, the template that we're going to use. And again, we're, we've defined this in the variables um, that we talked about earlier. And then we're creating the VM. So a resource is where you're actually going to provision a resource. You're going to create something. Uh, so here, all I want to do is create a virtual machine. So uh, you can say the count. So if I say a count of three, for example, you can use something called count.index to uh, reference, 
for example, the names that you want for those worker nodes. In this case, uh, if I named it VM name, I'll have a worker dash. The count index starts at zero, so I'll have VM name, uh, which is worker dash one, and worker dash two, and worker dash three. So that's what the names are going to be for my worker nodes. The resource pool ID, the data store ID, the resources that I want, CPU memory, the network interface, the disk. So it's very straightforward. Uh, once again, as I mentioned earlier, you have to say thin provision false because in the template from Packer, we created it with uh, thin provisioning false, meaning we're using thick provisioning. You have to be consistent. And finally, we are cloning that template to create the VM. Uh, you have some features here to add. So I can say what this domain, what the VM, what part of, uh, what domain this VM should be part of. I can give a host name for the VM itself. So inside of Ubuntu machine, uh, you give it a host name right here. And there are other options that you can check the documentation for as well. The network interface piece, if I leave it empty like that, uh, that means I'm going to call on DHCP to grab the IP information for this machine. You can also statically configure the IPs that you need, uh, DNS and, uh, and the default gateway and so on. So that should sum it up from a walkthrough of the configuration. Let's go back and take a look again. Um, the machines, as you can see here, have already been created. Uh, the beauty of Terraform is the ability to uh, automate this entire process. So I can spin up a, a complete Kubernetes cluster ready to go, spin it down if I don't need it. Uh, so this applies in VMware in, in any cloud of your choice. Uh, that's the beauty of Terraform. It's a lingua franca across different infrastructure. So I hope uh, this video has helped you to see how we can use Packer to create VMware templates and how to use uh, Terraform to create VMs based on those templates. And specifically for this video, we focused on Ubuntu, uh, flavor of Linux to show you how this can be done. We have a previous video, as I mentioned earlier, talking about uh, doing all this with a Windows 2016 server. Uh, so you can reference that as well. Thanks for watching.